Late last year, our Queensland Rugby Indigenous Program staff hosted students from the communities of Sherberg, Warrabinder and Yarrabah for the second 2016 Future Indigenous Leaders Camp. This week we've got the Reds Future Indigenous Leaders Program participants down here enjoying their uh, second leadership camp for the year. Uh, the Future Indigenous Leaders Program uh, is a program that we deliver in partnership with Rio Tinto and to the communities of Sherberg, Warrabinder and Yarrabah. And, uh, the program started a couple of years ago with, with 20 participants um, and now we're working with 85 participants from those communities and, and the, the kids we work with, boys and girls, um, they're part of the program um, because of the, they've been identified as potential leaders of those communities um, for the next generation. So uh, we work beside them with, with mentors one-on-one -on -one, um, assisting them to overcome any boundaries to their education uh, and then importantly supporting them um, through the major transitions of their life from primary to secondary uh, and then eventually from secondary into post-school employment or further education be it university or TAFE. Um, the camp this week, uh, they, they, they attend two a year if they, if they meet their goals that they set with their mentors and, and some of it's around big, big ticket reward items of wet and wild and dream world and coming to Reds games but importantly it's about building aspiration and, and opportunity for these kids uh, as they do transition through school and, and look for what is next in their life journey. So um, you know, we visit Rio Tinto, we go to the Defence Force, this week they also went to Bond University to, to look at opportunities for young Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander youth and, and uh, employment and, and tertiary uh, and you know, start to really begin to understand what is of interest of them and, and what their futures could possibly hold. Rio Tinto have been a long-term partner of the program and their ongoing support has allowed Queensland rugby staff to use sport as a vehicle to encourage social change in the next generation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander youth. Yes, yeah, so obviously the partnership with Rio Tinto and, and uh, the attraction for them was, was obviously we're a sport and we're a brand and we can really engage with, with young people today. But importantly the program isn't about you know, identifying kids that can play the game. Yes, there's going to be a benefit um, and there are going to be kids who have the ability to play rugby and be successful in it. But you know, first and foremost their selection is based on leadership potential and academic potential. Um, you know, not all our kids play rugby and, and, and a lot don't. Um, it is about using sport as a vehicle to reward positive behaviour and, and, so, and trying to uh, implement social change um, into communities where you know, the, the townships and, and the people in them are making positive steps towards um, their futures and, and these kids are you know, generational changes uh, at some point in, in the future. The Future Indigenous Leaders Program forms part of Queensland Rugby's wider Indigenous strategy which is designed to nurture the development of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander youth from primary school through to their chosen career path. Obviously the Future Leaders Program is a, you know, it's an important part of the Queensland Reds Indigenous Program strategy which is that crayon to career um, care I guess. Uh, you know, we start with attendance programs, it's five year olds and Future Leaders and Reds Generation Next and then employment strategies. And, you know, it can't be done without the commitment of the organisation first and foremost, that's both the Queensland Rugby Union and, and the players and their staff to build that aspiration. Um, but also you know, we've we're lucky enough to have a number of strong long-term partners. We've already mentioned Rio Tinto. Um, state and federal government support us. Um, you know, we've got the Defence Force, Bond University, Career Trackers. Last but not least is certainly the support of the communities. You know, it's really a collaborative effort. Um, we don't have any success without the schools and, and the communities and the elders all, all playing their part and, and helping us drive a program that's going to create outcomes for them. Um, you know, it can't be a top top-down driven uh, model, it has to be collaborative and community driven. We think that's something that um, we've done reasonably well uh, and something that's certainly of high importance to uh, our strategy moving forward. Having the support of the communities is paramount to the program and for the community members involved they can see the positive change in each individual child. The first time I went back when I came on the first trip, I went back and I sat down with the parents I, I explained what they did and then um, I can't wait to go home because these kids, they ch change a lot and from, from the start of this year now to the second team, this, this, work, this, this thing was fantastic. I couldn't get over how many kids, they all got involved and no matter how tired they were, they still got involved and they were happy, you know, and that's what made me sat back and I took a big deep breath because I was going to have a bit of tears growing down. And I couldn't say much to the kids because they stepped up and they really stepped high. And the older kids, only, only thing is the little kids are noticing this. And they keep noticing how these kids are already there. These smaller kids are coming through all the time. 
they're going to learn a lot and they're, they're going to shine a lot. And we got a couple of kids I know that start, the year six kids, I know they're going to be, they're going to be a couple of kids there that they already got their goals set for the future. Yeah. You know, they already know what they want to do. Oh no, I wish this can keep going on for a good while. I hope we still have the have it for you know for all these kids to keep coming through and and shine and you know, keep them shining bright and hopefully what at the end of the um end of the when the one of these kids fin hopefully finish university and you know I wanna see what the story happened in ten years time. I wanna look like okay, we've done this. Now see what happened in ten years time. I think so, yeah, definitely. Like We can see it in a couple of the, the kids that we have on the program now. Uh, Jay is an example. He's um, He's got a scholarship, I believe it is. And yeah, just to see how his behaviour and everything's changed since he's started the program, he's actually wanting to finish school now and to get that opportunity to come down is excellent. And for the other kids to, to be able to go in and see that there's career options in the Defence Force, they're getting to see like this trip they got to see um, all different types of jobs, so it's a great opportunity for them to see. They get to go to Bond University and see what uni is going to be like. There's been a lot of opportunities for them to be a part of, and yeah, it's not everyday things that they're going to come across. So it's definitely yeah, a great opportunity for them to come down and be a part of this program. For the program participants, they're becoming role models within their communities, with many other children hungry for the opportunity to attend the camp. For for me, when I feel to be a role model for other kids at um, Rabinda. Um, they also like asked me how I could, how they could get on the camp, and yeah. And I tell them that they should go to school every day and be good. Um, kids ask me how do they get on the res camp. I just say, oh, you just go to school every day, do all your work, and try your hardest and everything, and just try everything and. Be good. Follow our teachers' rules. Stay in class. For some of the older participants, they're beginning to think about their life after school, and they're also seeing their younger siblings join the program. I want to be able to get a good education and get a good job when I get older. When I finish school, I'm thinking of going to university, but I don't know which university yet. Yeah, makes me feel good because she's. She always wanted to come on the camp and stuff, so she keeps on telling me, oh, how do you get into the camp? I'd say, oh, I just do all my work at school and go to school every day. And, yeah. When Anta came on the program, felt funny, but I was proud of her for also coming on the camp. While the program aims to provide opportunities for the next generation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander youth, for the QRU staff involved, they find the experience of mentoring the participants extremely rewarding. As a proud Aboriginal woman, um, I feel privileged to be uh, part of an organisation that encourages and supports um, opportunities for the future generations of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. I'm really excited to start working with um, some of our future leaders when they transition into Red Generation Next. Um, we've got a lot of very talented students and from my experience working with um, students already in the program who have now graduated from university and who are now travelling uh, the world, um, I'm really excited to see where, where this next generation goes um, with the program. So with my education degree uh, going through and doing uh, a subject on Indigenous uh, students and teaching Indigenous students it became a bit of a passion for me when I was at uni and moving up to Cairns as a participation officer I um, got to work with a lot of Indigenous students up there doing attendance programs and a future leaders program in Yarraba and also up in the Cape and it, you know really hit home for me and really enjoyed that sort of space where um, I felt like I was making a difference in these kids lives they obviously come from different all the different home lives but you know they come to school and you know the benefits that you could see and the smiles that you could see from their face you know really made an impression on me and something that I really wanted to get you know, a bit further in.